Okay, so um, just to go over the types of automatic sprinkler systems really quickly, um, these five basic sprinkler systems, more detailed notes are in your are in the notes that we provided, and we provided pretty pictures. We try to provide pictures where we can, um, slowly because I don't like just looking at blank slides. Um, so of course we have the, the wet pipe system, and that's where the wa the pipes are filled with water, and there's a fusible, fusible link on a sprinkler. When when a fire starts, it'll heat the hot gases will accumulate at the ceiling, and when when the temperature reaches a certain a certain point it'll fuse the sprinkler and water will start coming out of the open sprinkler. So water comes out of one sprinkler that opens immediately. Um, wet pipes are used basically wherever we can. It's the most economical, it's the best sprinkler system. We generally use them unless there's a reason not to, like freezing or the hazard's so high that we, we have to switch to a deluge system. Um, a dry pipe system, the pipes are filled with air and nitrogen. When a sprinkler fuses, the air and nitrogen releases from the system, and then the dry pipe valve opens, letting water into the system. Deluge, this picture over here is a deluge system. Um, it needs to have a detection system. So here there's a smoke detector. When the smoke detector goes into alarm, it sends a signal to the control panel. The control panel will open up a solenoid valve that releases the priming chamber of the deluge valve, <clears throat> which will cause the deluge valve to open. And a deluge system has every sprinkler open, so water will start flowing out of every single sprinkler. We use deluge valves in high hazard areas like a pool fire, um, airport hangar, something with hydrocarbons. <clears throat> a pre-action system is, is meant to um, do one of two things. A single interlock and a double interlock are, are meant to to reduce accidental releases. So, and then a non-interlock is used if we have a very large dry area, such as like a warehouse that, that can't be maintained at temperature and a dry pipe system would be too large. It gets over 750 gallons. <clears throat> All right, so the, the single interlock, it, it's called the single interlock because it emits water to the sprinkler piping upon operation of the detector. So only needs one, one thing to happen for water to enter in. A double interlock will emit water into the sprinkler system when both the detection system goes off and also the sprinkler fuses. So it needs two, two separate actions to release water. A non-interlock emits water in the sprinkler upon operation of the detector device or the sprinkler. So it doesn't really need it. It doesn't need one or the other. And then the fifth system is somewhat archaic. It's the antifreeze system. And that's basically where you put an antifreeze solution in with the water to prevent freezing. It used to be pretty common where you had small, um, small loading docks or small systems in freezing conditions. So below 40, it was economical. Below 40 gallons, it was economical. Um, the cost of dry pipe systems have gone down, though. That's no longer economical. Also, there's concerns with environmental and then putting the antifreeze on the fire. All right, so just to go over the components of a sprinkler system really quickly. You have the system riser. I'm sorry, actually you have the water source, which brings the water into the building. And then you have the system riser, which is basically the control valves, the alarm valves, and the fire department connection. Then you have feed mains or bulk mains, which feed cross mains. And cross mains are mains that are attached directly to branch lines. Branch lines are, are piping with sprinklers. So you can see here there's all these sprinklers at the ceiling. They connect to a pipe. That's a branch line. That branch line ties into a main. The main that it ties into is a cross main. And the main that the, that the cross main ties into is a feed main. <clears throat> we also put inspector test connection in there so that we could test the flow of water and also the alarms and everything of that nature. I'm gonna back up here a little bit. So this type of system, this arrangement is a tree system. 
basically it says that water will have to flow from only has one path to follow so you can see if it starts at one of these sprinklers at the ends it'll flow down the branch line it only has one path to follow then it's going to go through the cross main i'll have one path to follow into the feed main with that one pass to follow back so that's a tree system <clears throat> we also have looped and gridded systems so you can see here on the left this is the loop system the branch lines still have one path to feed and then it goes into a cross main that is loops and then there's multiple paths to get back to the water source so after you get through one of these branch lines you can go either direction and that cuts down on the friction loss <clears throat> a gridded system similar that that the cross mains are looped but also the branch lines are interconnected so at any point of these sprinklers on the gridded system you can go in either direction so there's always a multiple path so so the friction is cut way down in the grid system so hydraulic hydraulically the the gridded system is is the best in terms of hydraulic it's also the most expensive and so usually we see a tree system it's the most economical it's the simplest and then a loop system somewhere in between it has some of it has it has more hydraulic advantage than than a tree system and it doesn't quite cost quite as much as a grid system but it still it still has more than a tree